Hello everyone! Today marks the 115th anniversary of the birth of Stepan Bandera. The history of his life surrounded by legends, myths, and falsehoods. In this video, we learn who Stepan Bandera was, what he was involved in, and why Russians have a negative sensitive towards him. On January 1st, 1909, Stepan Bandera was born into the family of Greek Catholic priests in the village of Stare Ukraine, today part of the modern ivano Francisco region, at that time within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Since childhood, Bandera witnessed the revival and development of the Ukrainian state. From November 1918, his father served as ambassador to the Parliament of the Western Ukrainian People's Republic, the Ukrainian National Council, in Stanislavil, and actively participated in shaping the state life of Kalushchina. In September or October of 1919, Stepan Bandera enrolled in the Ukrainian gymnasium in Street, where he studied until 1927. In the third grade, he became a member of PLUS, a Ukrainian scouting organization. In the mid-1927, Bandera successfully passed his graduation exam at the gymnasium and decided to enroll in the Ukrainian Economic Academy in Podebrode, Czechoslovakia. However, the Polish authorities refused to issue him a foreign passport. In September 1928, he moved to Lviv and enrolled in the agronomy department of the Higher Polytechnic School, where he studied until 1933. After graduating from the gymnasium, Bandera engaged in underground work for the UBO, Ukrainian military organization, combining it with his studies and public activities. Bandera formally became a member of the UVO only in 1928 receiving an appointment in intelligence and later in the propaganda department. In 1929, when the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, or UN, was established, Bandera became one of its first members in Western Ukraine on the recommendation of Stepan Okhremovich. Despite his youth, Bandera quickly rose within the underground hierarchy of the OUN in Western Ukraine due to his fanatical dedication, strong will, practicality, organizational abilities, and meticulous adherence to secrecy. The Polish police exerted significant efforts against the Ukrainian nationalists underground. According to Bandera himself, between 1930 and 1933, he was arrested five times. In 1930, with his father for anti Polish propaganda, and in the summer of 1931 for attempting to illegally cross the Polish Czech border. In 1931, Bandera became a member of the regional leadership of the OUN under the leadership of the regional leader Ivan Habrusevich. Starting from 1931, Bandera maintained close contacts with the leadership of the UVO, OUN, regularly traveling abroad on OUN business. He participated in OUN conference in Prague, summer 1932, Berlin and Dancing, 1933. He met with Yvhen Konovalets and other leaders of the OUN during this period. In the OUN, Bandera distinguished himself as a radical politician. For example, he organized several political assassinations, including the killing of the secretary of the Soviet consulate in Lviv, Alexei Mailo, as a response to the Holodomor in Ukraine, and the assassination of Runislav Viratsky, who implemented a brutal policy of pacification. I want to stop at this point. On March 14, 1923, Eastern Galicia came under Polish administration. As part of Poland, Ukrainians in these lands were prohibited from holding administrative positions in state institutions, the army, police, and secret services. The name Eastern Little Poland 
was proposed for Eastern Galicia. Polish replaced Ukrainian in all state and municipal institutions, as well as education establishments. Ukrainian surnames were replaced with Polish ones, and Orthodox Ukrainians were persecuted being possibly compelled to convert to the Catholic faith. In 1936, Bandera received a life sentence. After the occupation of Poland by Germany in 1939, the political activist was released. During this period, Bandera worked on expanding the network of the liberation organizations throughout the territory of Ukraine. But this plan did not come to fruition. A split began within the organization. The faction of the OUN that definitively came under Bandera leadership became known as Banderites of OUNB. In December 1940, the revolutionary leadership of the OUN led by Stepan Bandera outlined its action program in the manifesto, which was further developed at the Second Kharkiv Great Assembly of the OUN in the April 1941. The essence of it was that the OUNB was to embark on the struggle for the realization for a national revolution with the aim of establishing a sovereign Ukrainian state. Due to extremely unfavorable wartime conditions, the OUN members managed to mobilize their forces to proclaim the act of the restoration of Ukrainian state on June 30, 1941, in Lviv. Immediately, a coalition government, the Ukrainian State Administration, was formed. In essence, the position of the OUNB aimed at uniting all national political structures on a democratic parliamentary basis. They believe that the war should be utilized to achieve the state independence of Ukraine, followed by negotiations with the warring parties from the position of a sovereign state. It's worse, nothing that, unlike the Russians, German military personnel showed a relatively tolerant attitude toward the state initiatives of the Ukrainians. They did not abstract the display of national symbols such as the blue yellow flag and the trident. However, the Nazi occupational administration negatively perceived the establishment of the national state life. Stepan Bandera and his associates were detained and interrogated by the German police. They were pressured to retract the act of the restoration of Ukraine state until the end of the war. Nevertheless, the leaders of the OUN insist that the declaration of independence in view was a historical fact. Ultimately, the German leadership decided to destroy Ukrainian state institution and subject Ukrainian nationalists to repression. Consequently, the German occupation authorities openly began implementing a chauvinistic colonial policy towards Ukraine and the Ukrainians, leading to a mass resistance movement led by the OUN and the establishment of the Ukrainian Insurgent Army, UPI. Stepan Bandera himself never personally led the UPI as he was arrested by the Nazi after the declaration of the restoration of the Ukrainian state on July 5, 1941. He spent some time in the Berlin prison. In January 1942, along with several associates, he was transferred to the concentration camp Sachsenhausen. In September or December 1944, the Bandera and several other prominent members of the OUN were released by the Nazis. The Germans attempted to enlist the OUNB and UPI as allies against Moscow. However, the Bandera rejected this proposal from the Nazis. The Soviet partisan movement, which spread across Ukrainian territories in 1942, to 1944 was directed against the local population to prevent them from considering the German as better to the Russian.
analyzing the activities of the red vendors in Ukraine, it should be noted that Ukrainian nationalists were perceived as greater enemies by them than the German occupiers. From 1944 to 1956, Soviet forces and security organs killed approximately 155,000 insurgents, including key leaders of the OUN, UPI, such as Roman Shukhevich, Dmitro Klitschkivsky, Alexander Lutsky, Petro Olinik, and others. After the war, Bandera continued to live in Western Germany, primarily in Munich. He lived under his surname and later acquired false documents. He organized paramilitary groups that maintained communication with the Ukrainian underground in Western Ukraine, which was then part of the USSR. Bandera also sought to coordinate cooperation with the intelligence services of Western states to aid the Ukrainian liberation movement. The organization led by Bandera actively fought for the independent Ukraine until the mid-1950s. In 1959, Bandera was assassinated in Munich, and the responsibility for his death lies with the Soviet agents for Dansashinsk. This is a short story about Stepan Bandera. To better understand the state of Ukrainians at that time, it is necessary to delve deeper into history. But that will be in upcoming videos.